Hey guys, how's it going? This is Sydney from PhoneDog.com and behind the camera, see if you can see me. Hey! In the reflection there. So uh, Mango version 7.5 has been released for Windows Phone. Uh, it's been released to 50% uh, of Windows Phone users, at least that's what Microsoft is saying. So you may have it, you may not have it, you may have had it for a while now. Um, I obviously have gotten the update or else I wouldn't be doing this video. And so I wanted to tell you guys there's a couple of some of the new features that I really appreciate. I have um, a full review up on PhoneDog.com so you can check out you know, my thoughts on the update, things I like, things that maybe were disappointing. But for this video, I'm going to cover just some of my favorite features and then also some of some lesser known features that are still very useful. So to start off with, I think one of the biggest features, at least for me, was multitasking. I can't tell you how many times I'd be listening to Slacker Radio and I would get a text message and just you know, by habit, go home so I could, you know, read the message or click on the notification so I could read the message and then my music would stop playing. Uh, it was just a habit after using Android for so long. Um, anyway, but with Mango, I don't have to worry about that because you now have multitasking. So all you do is you do a long press on the back button like I just did. And then you have uh, your last five tasks. Now, I talked about in my review, you know, what I think of this interface and, and how it works, and I'll tell you a little bit about it now, and then you can go and read the article. Um, I do wish that you had more than five that you could go back to. Uh, that would be nice. And also, since it's not technically uh, multitasking, it's more just task switching. If you have two tasks that happen to use the same app, it will still take up two slots. So you can see here, lock and wallpaper, system. These are both settings. This is the same app. It's both settings, but it just goes back to the next task. So uh, it's not true multitasking, and I wish there were more than five slots, but still much better than what we had before. Very easy, and also, you know, it looks great. Uh, so multitasking is a big one. I'm really enjoying it. Another of my uh, favorite features come with the email interface. Uh, to start with email conversation view. So before, if I had a, you know several emails within the same conversation, they would just show up as separate emails. I have to click on one. It would just be separate in this whole long list of emails when it's really just the same conversation. So as you can see, now it's a little bit different. Here is one conversation. Instead of just having all five messages in a list, it's condensed. And then if I want to select one or see all of them, then I can expand it, see the whole thing, maybe go to that, and then I can also view the whole thread. So um, definitely much improved in terms of conversations, makes it a lot easier, and also you know just saves space. I don't have to see five emails that are really in the same conversation. Uh, more on emails, you can also have linked inboxes. Now I'm not going to show you my my linked accounts because uh, obviously it would show you my email address, but um. Basically, I have I have a Gmail account, I have a phone dog email account, and I have this old Yahoo account that I don't really ever use anymore. It was one that I got a long time ago, and uh, but my friends, they still use it. They haven't caught on to emailing me at my Gmail account, so I had this Yahoo live tile that was just kind of hanging around, and I didn't like having it. But I didn't really have a choice. But now with linked inboxes, I have phone dog, Gmail, and Yahoo, the one that I hardly ever use, all linked in this one, this one inbox, this one interface. Uh, the nice thing about this is that you can still have different sync times. So Yahoo, you know, I don't use it very much. I don't need to check it very much. So I have it checked. You know, I, I sync that inbox. You know, maybe like every 30 minutes. But I can still have my work email synced every five minutes if I want to, um, but it also comes to the same inbox. So uh, linked inbox is very useful. Uh, now let's move on to another feature that I really like. We'll get back to the email inboxes later on when I talk about some of the lesser known features, but moving on to the camera. Uh, the camera app has been, has been much improved. Let me see if I can get something to capture, get my camera there. Oh look, it's a picture of a camera. Oh my goodness, okay. Uh, so the email app has been improved. Uh, one thing that you'll notice, or you may not notice, but one minor thing is that you can now just tap on the screen and it'll instantly autofocus and take the picture. So if you don't like the button, you know, you can just tap on the screen. Uh, also, it saves your camera settings, which is one thing that I really appreciate because if we go to video mode, 
the phone captures HD video, and I believe all Windows Phone devices capture HD video, but the thing was, by default, it captured VGA video. So every time you went to the camera app, went to the camcorder, it was always VGA video quality by default, and it was kind of a hassle to go in and change it every time. Sometimes I would forget, and I'd be recording this video, and I'm like, why is the quality all sucky? And I couldn't figure it out, and then I would remember, and so it was the remembering and the hassle and then forgetting. But now I set it to default 720p HD, I save my settings, and then I'm done. Every time I open the camcorder, it's automatically in, in HD. So um, definitely a nice, nice feature there. Again, we'll come back to the camera in a little bit, talk about some of the other new features. So uh, let's move on to some of the improvements to Bing. Now, uh, first of all, whenever I first started using Windows Phone, I was really surprised by how well Bing performed because I've just always used Google. It's, it's simple, it works, it's what everybody used, and so it was you know, what I used all the time. Uh, you know, of course, with Windows Phone, you're kind of forced to use Bing, but it actually exceeded my expectations. But there are some new improvements to Bing Search. So if you notice down here, there's a couple of new icons, and we'll expand them so we can show them. We have Scout, Music, Vision, and then Voice. Voice has been there. Uh, Vision, kind of like Google Goggles, you know, you can scan a book cover, a barcode, a CD, if you remember those things, uh, QR codes, you can even scan text and then it will recognize the, te the text and then you can do a search for that text or it will translate the text. So vision, very useful. Music, think Shazam. You know, you can let it listen to a song, it'll tell you the song. So one of the, one of the nice features that I really like, one of my favorite features, new features, is uh, quick cards. So let's say I wanna go see a movie and I'm gonna type in Moneyball because it's a movie that I just saw, but say I wanted to see it again. Um, along with the typical links, it also gives you this uh, little section here that has theaters. Now in the demos that Microsoft has done, it also shows the show times right here. I'm not sure why that's not available right now, but anyway. Say I select that, it will take me to a quick card about the movie Moneyball, where it have the rating, genre, synopsis, and it'll show me show times uh, four theaters in my area along with you know any apps that are related to this search so say I want to see it at Studio Movie Grill it'll take me to another quick card about Studio Movie Grill where I can go to the website phone number uh, I can see reviews about that and then sh and then see show times for other movies at that theater so say this is a theater that I usually go to it's you know closest to where I live and it's the one that it's just my favorite theater well I can pin that to my home screen, or to my start screen. So, now when I select it, I can easily see show times uh, for that theater. So, um, Quick Cards, there's a lot of new improvements to Bing, but Quick Cards is probably one of my favorite new features. Okay, so those are my favorite new features, but there's also some little new features that you might not notice or might not know about, but they're also very useful. For example, let's go back to email, and you can now pin email folders to your start screen. So let's go to my folders, and we'll go to uh, show all folders, and then we'll go to say important, say I have um, I have it set to where certain emails from certain people or just certain subjects will automatically go to this important folder and I need to know right away uh, if I have an email coming to that folder. Well, I can now pin that to my start screen and it's there. I can just automatically go to that folder. Obviously, I don't have anything there now, but um, a nice feature, pinnable email folders. Uh, another kind of new feature that you probably will notice eventually, but maybe not right away, is uh, another improvement to the camera app. There's now, you'll notice there's Twitter integration now, which I didn't talk about as one of my favorite new features, um, mostly because it doesn't work the way <laughs> that I really thought it would. But anyway, um, you do now have Twitter integration, but what I was going to bring out is that you also have auto fix uh, just, you know, built into the camera. So, you know, certain phones like HTC phones, they come with uh, apps that will enhance your pictures. But now the operating system itself has that feature 
where it will auto fix your photos. And uh, with the pictures that I've done, it actually does a pretty decent job. It cleans them up, fixes the lighting. You can't really tell very well with the camera. It makes it look kind of blue, at least from my vantage point. But um, it really does do a good job. So auto fix, nice feature, and then you can undo it uh, or save that file if you'd like to. Um, now, another new feature in Mango is um, battery savers. So you can set the battery to, um, whenever your battery is getting low, it will kind of lessen uh, how often it syncs your, your email and different things like that. But a nice little tidbit about this new feature is that it will also tell you battery life remaining. And I know for me that was one thing, you know, I could tap about the top and see my battery and you know, kind of just see the icon, but I always wanted to know a number. And maybe again, that was part of just coming from Android where you have all these widgets where you can just see a number as soon as you want it. Um, so it's really nice now I can, uh, of course I have to go here, but at least I can now see a number, tell me an estimated time remaining and then the last time that I charged it. So a little feature there, but, uh, but very nice. Back into settings, let's go to the uh, lock and wallpaper settings. This is kind of an interesting idea that, uh, you know, I had never even thought about it before, but it's, but it's a new thing. So say I have a password set, we'll set it to three, four, one, 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 done. Okay, so I have a new password set. I can set, you know, screen times out after one minute or whatever. Uh, but another new thing is that you can set the interval for password lock. So say, you know, sometimes you happen to lock your, your, the screen and then you forget and, oh, wait a minute, I need to, you know, it's, if it's only like two seconds later, but you still have to enter the, you know, the password, sometimes it can be kind of a hassle. So now you can set it to, okay, only if it's been 30 seconds will you ask me for my password. So now if I lock it and then, oh, wait a minute, I didn't really mean to do that. I can easily just unlock it. I don't have to enter the password. Um, then you could see, you could set it, I have it on, you know, 30 seconds, but you could also set it to um, a minute or two minutes, you know, depending on your security. So kind of an interesting feature that I had never thought about, but actually very useful. So let's go back to Bing and we'll take a look at one more uh, new feature that has been added in Bing that uh, you may not notice right away, but it's kind of a big deal. So. Let's type in again Moneyball because, because it's almost 7.30 on a Sunday night and I can't think of anything else. So uh, now you have web, you have local, but you also have images. This is one thing that was missing in Windows Phone and it was something when I found out I was like, oh, that's kind of weird and disappointing. And it wasn't a big deal because, you know, how many times you need to find a picture on your phone. but. You know, sometimes maybe you do want to find a picture on your phone. You know, regardless, it wasn't there before, and now it is. So you now have image search in Bing, so, you know, search away on your phone. So there they are, guys. Um, my favorite new features in Windows Phone 7.5, and then also some new features that you might not know about or you might not have heard about, but that are still very useful. So, um, again, I have a full review up on phonedog.com of uh, my review of Mango, Taylor also has an article on you know, his thoughts on Windows Phone 7.5, so you can check those out. Um, but I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you guys later. Bye.